In this video, we're going to show that the discrete metric actually generates the discrete topology. And so and we'll let D denote the discrete metric, and we're just considering it on any arbitrary set. You know, maybe it's like the real numbers, maybe it's like, you know, just A, B, C, who knows, any set here. So just to remind you, what is the discrete metric on a set? It's the following. So remember, a metric is like a distance function that satisfies four properties. We don't really use those four properties uh, for this problem so much, but uh, in particular, right, it should spit out a real number that is trying to quantify how far apart two elements of X are. And so how does the discrete metric do that? Remember, uh, what it does is it claims or it specifies that, well, the distance from any point to itself has to be zero. Now that's true of uh, any metric, uh, but the discrete metric is, is nice because the only other possibility is that, well, if the points aren't the same, then the distance between any other two points just has to be one. So the distances are either the value zero or one. Every point is either one away from another point and a point is always zero away from itself. Cool. So what we're going to try to do again is prove that the topology that's generated by this metric D on the set X is truly the discrete topology. And maybe that's like a mouthful about what the heck does that mean? So what I'm taking for granted here is that uh, maybe we know what it means to say that a metric generates a topology. I'll say a little bit more about that in a moment here. But let's go ahead and let's say T is the topology on X that D generates. And again, I'll tell you what that means in a minute. But for now, just hang with me. So what does that mean? That means that the elements of T, remember a topology, right? It's just a bunch of subsets of my set X here. So the elements of T, in other words, the bunch of subsets that I'm playing with, and we give them this special name that they're open, whatever that adjective means. Again, all open means is that, oh, it's in your topology. That's it. But uh, to say that it's generated by that metric D, I'm gonna think of that as any set that's in T can be constructed from these open balls. And the way that I'll think about these open balls is B, and then X here denotes like the center of the ball, if you wanna think of it that way, and R is some positive real number, think of it as the radius here. And so uh, what is this thing? If I'm thinking about X as the center and R as the radius, then this set here, BXR, consists of all other points in my set X whose distance from X, remember that fixed X right there, is at most R. So think about that as, again, the ball centered at X of radius R. So any metric allows you to come up with these balls here. And again, to say that uh, the topology is generated by the metric means that all the open sets in the topology can be built out of these guys. When I say built out of these guys, I mean via like unions and intersections. Okay, so I hope it makes a little bit more sense about what this language here means. Again, how does a topology generate a metric? Again, you're using the open balls that the metric allows you to use. You're using those open balls to build the things in your topology. Well, let's look at the case that r is equal to a half. What if the radius is a half? What does the open ball around some any element x of radius half look like? Well, if we're thinking about hmm, the distance from uh, x to another element, it can't ever be a half. It's got to be 0 or 1. So to say that uh, the distance from uh, x to some other element is less than or equal to 1 half here, right? The only possibility... <laughs> is that it's equal to zero, right? That distance would have to be zero if it's less than a half. So there's only two values for the, for the uh, metric. It's either zero or one. So in particular, well, if we're only looking at things that are, one unit, or that are uh, less than a half units away from x, then you're just looking at the set x itself. Now, if that was a little bit confusing, I'll try to write it out a little bit nicer right here. If the distance between two points x and y is less than or equal to a half, then what I was saying above, well, there's only two values for what d can be. It can be zero or one. So therefore, it has to be the case that the distance from x to y is zero. But I know that, well, if the distance from x to y is zero, that implies that x and y have to be the same thing. So I hope it makes more sense now why, well, if x is equal to that y, there's truly only one element in this ball. So the open ball of radius a half is just the singleton x. And that's important. I'll come back to that in a minute. So what does that show? That shows that really any singleton is an element of the topology. Any singleton is open. That's a big idea. I'll show you how we're going to use that in a minute because what are we aiming for in this problem? We want to say that T is the discrete topology. So what does that mean? Remember the discrete topology, that's in some sense has the most open sets. And well, that just means that the topology is equal to the power set of X. Remember the power set is a collection of all the subsets of the set you're playing with. So we need to prove that t is actually equal to the power set of x. And what I'm going to show you here is how this information about t, the t that this discrete metric gave us, it is really the tool that helps us prove that t is actually equal to the power set of x here. 
So how are we gonna do that? Well, if you're gonna prove that two sets are equal, you need to prove both inclusions, both subset relationships. And so, well, it's always the case that T is a subset of the power set of X, right? So T just consists of a bunch of subsets, therefore, it's just part of the power set. So the harder thing to do, which is not true in general, is I need to prove the reverse relationship. I need to prove that T contains the power set of X. So to do that, we'll just do kind of like an element kind of chasing proof. Let's let A be an element of the power set of X. And remember the goal is I wanna show you that A actually lands in T. That'll give me the reverse inclusion here. All right, so what's it look like if A is an element of the power set of X? Well, what do you know about a set? You can always think of a set as the union of its elements. And to say that kind of precisely, a itself is the union of all these singletons where each x comes from A. Now why is that important? Why is this a big deal here? Because, well, what do you know about these singletons? You know that each of the singletons is in your topology T. And uh, what do you know? So A is the union of a bunch of elements of T. And what do you know about a topology? A topology should be kind of closed under unions, right? When you take the unions of a bunch of stuff in T, that needs to land in T as well. So therefore, if this is a bunch of stuff in T, then when I take the union of it all, which is the same thing as A, that union has to be in T. Therefore, A itself has to be an element of T. And now what that does, we just started with any arbitrary subset, uh, any arbitrary element of the power set, and we've just shown that that element is uh, actually in T as well. So that gives me the reverse inclusion I was after, that the power set is contained in T, which is kind of silly because the power set is the collection of all possible subsets. Again, therefore, we uh, get this equality here. So we've shown that T is actually equal to the power set, and remember that that means to say that T is the discrete topology, that's what we're after there. If T is the power set of X, then that's what it means to be the discrete topology.